Hey everybody, I'm Darren, one of the pastors here on this channel, and today is the conclusion of the Gospel of Luke with our daily Bible reading. In a rather dramatic ending, we're going to see Jesus conquer the grave. He won't be found there anymore. And he appears to some of his followers. He explains scriptures to them in a way they had never seen before. And finally, he's carried up into heaven. Let's pray, and then we're going to read this chapter. God, thank you for this opportunity to read your word. I pray, Lord, that, that right now as we read, that you speak to our hearts. We do believe that you speak today, God, and we ask you to be present with us. Lord, forgive us where we sin. Build us up where we need to be encouraged. Sharpen us, Lord, and form us and mold us. In your name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the tomb bringing the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. They went in, but did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men stood by them in dazzling clothes. So the women were terrified and bowed down to the ground. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? asked the men. He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, it is necessary that the Son of Man be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words. Returning from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women who were telling the apostles these things. But these words seemed like nonsense to them, and they did not believe the women. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. When he stooped to look in, he saw only the linen cloths. So he went away amazed at what had happened. Now that same day, two of them were on their way to the village called Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. Together they were discussing everything that had taken place. And while they were discussing and arguing, Jesus himself came near and began to walk along with them but they were prevented from recognizing him. Then he asked them, what is this dispute that you're having with each other as you are walking? And they stopped walking and looked discouraged. The one named Cleopas answered him, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that happened the there in these days? What things? He asked them. So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet powerful in action and speech before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we were hoping that he was the one who was about to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it's the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women from our group astounded us. They arrived early at the tomb, and when they didn't find his body, they came and reported that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see him. He said to them, How foolish and slow you are to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Wasn't it necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted for them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. They came near the village where he was going, and he gave the impression that he was going farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, because it's almost evening, and now the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. It was as he reclined at the table with them that he took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, Weren't our hearts burning within us while he was talking with us on the road, explaining the scriptures to us? 
That very hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven, and those with them gathered together, who said, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then they began to describe what had happened on the road and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. As they were saying these things, he himself stood in their midst. He said, he said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Why are you troubled? He asked them. And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. Having said this, he showed them his hands and feet. But while they were still amazed and in disbelief because of their joy, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He told them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He also said to them, This is what is written, the Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead the third day, and repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and look, I am sending you what my father promised. As for you, stay in the city until you are empowered from on high. Then he led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was carried up into heaven. After worshiping him, they returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple praising God. Let's look briefly at the section from verses 13 through 32. Two disciples of Jesus are uh, on their way to Emmaus, milling this whole crucifixion thing over in their heads, trying to get a grasp on what's going on. Just prior, their hopes had been totally shattered. The Jews in that day were waiting for a Messiah, somebody to come and rescue them and redeem Israel. This was a deep-seated, gut-level hope that probably had been ingrained in them for quite some time. The people were looking for the rescuer, and when Jesus came on the scene, they were hoping that it was going to be him. But then he was killed, and their hopes were crushed. Imagine getting news that the tomb where he lay was actually empty. They don't know what to make of this. They're confused, scared, maybe a little hopeful, but probably just confused and angry. But in the midst of this chaos, a man comes alongside them, begins walking with them. Now, Jewish travelers wouldn't have actually found this strange. This would be normal to join a small traveling group, especially if they assumed him to be a Passover pilgrim heading back home. So Jesus joins the two and He begins to talk to them, and he interprets the scriptures for them in a way that makes their hearts burn and and their eyes are opened. It's not until later that Jesus helps them see who he is, that it was Jesus himself walking in their midst. Now, presumably, Jesus was actually preventing them from recognizing him. But this brings up a question for me today, and it's a question I want to close this book with. We have seen lots of pictures of Jesus through this long gospel that Luke wrote. We see him as the healer, the teacher. We see him as a child, a man, someone tempted. We can see him in the words on these pages, but do we see Jesus? in our own lives. If Jesus were walking with us, teaching us as we wrestle with the confusion and pain and anxiety of this world, if he were there, would we recognize him? What does his presence look like in our lives? Or how about this? 
How might the seven mile walk to Emmaus look as we wrestle with the trials of this world? How might it look differently if we knew Jesus was walking on the road with us? Our next book is the book of Acts. We're going to see how Jesus expects us to live. He expects us to live with the power of his spirit in our lives. We will see you on Thursday to start the book of Acts. See you then.